we're going to spend the next uh, 15, 15 minutes or so just looking back because we're going to try to spend most of our time this afternoon looking forward. So I'm going to start with Louise. I'm hoping that Louise is there. I see Steve's in the spotlight. We'll come to you in a second. So is Louise um, with me, um, Pierre? Yep. There she is. I can hear her. Okay, Louise, I wanted to go with you first because when we looked at that, when I looked at the registration for who's coming, you were the very first person who clicked. So I thought, <laughs> okay, wow, this is an enthusiastic person. So, Louise, and this is the same question for all of us, really. What I like to do is just to, to look back. I don't know when you started your online journey, but if you can look back a little bit and how did you first get into this online dialogue or collaboration, communication? Do you remember where it started? And, and is there some key moment or key lesson that you kind of look back and think, wow, that really changed my life? Or, and, and you know, where are you now in, in a sense? So okay. over to you, maybe you want to introduce where you work these days. Okay. That might have changed as well. Yes, it has. Hi. Well, hello, everyone. Some uh, familiar faces, uh, some so, some faces I have for familiar, but from way back. So this is a bit of a, a nostalgia trip as well. So it's a great to start with this question and uh, also to some new people. So, um, yeah, I mean, where did where did this journey begin? I, I could go on. Uh, um, so I did a PhD, uh, sort of 2004 to 2008 on ICTs, uh, the use of ICTs to support agricultural value chains. Um, and, you know, I, and I think it's, you know, I've, I've been reflecting on, you know, the, the conversation at that time around the digital divide, concepts of digital leapfrogging, and how we could really make use of these tools for development. Um, at the time, um, you know, I took the concept of I, ICT as information communication technology. There was a lot that was being written around information and content. There was a lot that was being written about technology. Uh, but at that time, and I think that's changed dramatically in the last 15 years, the communication and the sort of the potential to use those tools to actually connect people and understand how you get people communicating in an online space was I felt less less understood and, and something that I focused very much on in my thesis and using uh, social network analysis to understand you know who are the who are the landscape of people that we want to connect with these tools we've, we, we've got the tools but what is the what is the point of creating those connections um, and that you know that I think has changed I mean this is pre-facebook um, you know, coming out of my PhD, I think a seminal moment, there was a, a Web 2.0 conference at the FAO, I think 2006, was that 15 years ago? That I remember, I remember that going, coming to your workshop, Peter, with, uh, with Chris uh, and learning all about the wikis and the blogs and, you know, and all these great tools that have now become ubiquitous in our everyday life. Uh, you know, blogs certainly now, I, I think wikis have fallen but down the side, I think there's the, you know, there's still a lot of work in, in this group, but I, th I think wikis for collaboration is something that we could revisit. Um, and yeah, I mean, just so oh, I forgot to, so, so, so that's my back. So that's where I've come from. I mean, I, I sort of forgot the introduction. I was so excited to see who. So I'm now the monitoring evaluation and learning manager, IDS, the Institute of Development Studies, which many of you will have heard of. Um, and I sit within a, a team of knowledge, impact and policy. So we're very much around sort of how we use knowledge um, uh, to, to inform policy and evidence informed um, decision making. So really, it's like the, the, the challenge of I think the, the challenge has now gone from we've got so much information um, that how we how we sort of synthesize um, that information to inform decision making. So I, I'm. I'm going to wrap up with the, the sort of tension that I see and I know the next question about challenges between sort of synthesis of this vast amount of information that we all now have at our fingertips and the, the importance of contextualizing that so that it actually becomes useful in, in different contexts and that's something that that's sort of my my day-to-day -day, um, grapple you know working across projects working across consortiums how we bring that that the real you know how we separate the wheat from the chaff of that they where are those nuggets of information that are really going to help us drive policy agendas forward okay thanks louise and that, that big meeting i think yeah jacobo was, was an absolute driver in all of that 
So indeed, that was it was all new and exciting then, and now it's all old hat. Yeah. So let me move to so let me move to Steve. Steve, a little bit. You're you're probably and I, I think you're down in Ghana somewhere, right? Put your mic on. Okay, same story. Where how did you get into all this online dialogue business? And what did you take from it? Where are you now? Well, thank you, thank you very much. I am um, yes, you're right. I'm based in Ghana. Um, uh, specifically, I'm located in the northern part of Ghana, Tamale, to be precise. Um, I presently work with an organization called Savannah Signatures. We are in a for impact, not for profit making organization that is uh, focused on making available tools. You can call them technological tools and then trying to orient people on how they can take advantage of the tools available for development purposes. Um, well, I mean, it was gratifying to see Saskia on the screen uh, because my journey also has Saskia, you know, around. Um, so I just, this was somewhere around 2005, I guess. I had just graduated from school, very naive, uh, did not know, you know, really what to do. I had a lot of energy in me. But one thing that was in me was knowledge sharing. I really needed um to be out there i also needed to network i felt yeah i had some knowledge but i also felt that i needed to learn and it was really all about looking for the platform to exchange ideas to learn from people you know and to also share luckily for me uh saskia and iicd and by the way let me mention that i'm a living um legacy of iicd uh, because i am one of the products of iicd and Saskia was at the time, you know, the one visiting Ghana always. And uh, I worked very closely with her. She, together with her colleagues, introduced me to this organization called the Ghana Information Network for Knowledge Sharing Ginks. And Ginks was basically about bringing together everybody in Ghana um, to learn about, you know, technology and the role that technology can play in advancing the development of Ghana. And so I got very, I got introduced to Ginks. And yeah, I rose very fast within things. I started, you know, learning about it. And then I, I got to occupy a moderating role, both for their online platforms and then offline platform. One thing that things did, which I think maybe moving into the future, that's one of the critical things we have to also look at, was both a face-to-face -face knowledge sharing, you know, platform and then the online collaboration. And I thought that that worked pretty well. So people had a face-to-face -face interactions and then they also met online to collaborate. And it's really, really, you know, um, helped. Yeah, uh, at the moment, SAT, uh, gangs it's no more, it's no longer very active. Yeah, due to various reasons, I think people got busy and then also the changing phase of, you know, online collaboration with new strategies and also with the advent of all of these technologies that we have, you know, um, yeah, people getting busy here and there uh, with a lot of workload. So Gings really is not active that much. I think it's really, um, the challenge came in when they stopped the face-to-face -face interactions and then it was all about the online collaboration. And so people began to, to drop out. But I play critical roles, you know, in bringing uh, IACD funded projects, offices together both for face-to-face -face sessions to share knowledge among themselves, but that was really what ICD was pushing for their projects that they funded from various organizations to come together to exchange ideas and to share knowledge. And this I did for you know the face-to-face -face sessions, but also through the gangs platform, you know, to have that online collaboration. So basically, that's really how the journey has been for me. For me, it's really been about that fire burning in me, that need for knowledge sharing that need to network with other people to get to know uh, you know about what's out there in the world and how to get to meet new people so that was really for me the fire that was burning in me great thanks steve okay that gives us so yeah, many of us have been on, on journeys with saskia so nice to hear other people share that uh, i'm going to go to, to ivan now ivan um same picture for you how did they all come about this online business and where are you now so i'm i'm connecting from italy I work currently a joint research center. It's a scientific body of the European Commission, where I'm a head of unit for a unit that works on knowledge for sustainable development and food security. Um, 
and I'll talk a little bit more about the work in the next question. But I think, you know, if I look at the retrospect, well, first, it's really, it's really, really, really big pleasure to be in this setting and to be in this group. And I already wrote down names of everybody that I need to reconnect one on one after the call. Um, I, I think it's a kind of a gradual thing. Right? So for me, the first step was a dialogue, right? And I mean, you have to understand that I, I'm a Croatian. And, you know, my parents were from Serbia, were from Montenegro. <laughs> Right, so since I was a kid, I always used to travel in different parts of Yugoslavia where I would meet different cultures, different religions, different dialects, if you want, right? And for me, this idea of just simply discovery of the world was always very, very, very close to my heart. And when I would go then back to Croatia, back to school, I realized that it was difficult to communicate this discovery you know, to, to the colleagues, just to kids in the classroom, yeah, I would play with, you know. And, and, and for me, the whole issue of dialogue was always somehow intrinsically in my mind, right? And then when it comes to the specifics of getting into online collaboration and online dialogue, it's 1998, and I double checked, it's the year in which Lenny Kravitz published the album five, and we have a release of Big Lebowski and Truman Show, okay? So then I got a job in a, a small NGO in the Caribbean, in Dominican Republic, called Fumeredes, and I was, responsible among other colleagues to run a virtual community called Mystica. And it was all very, very weird. You know, we had to do this, I, I had to do this really facilitation of mailing lists, which I never heard before about, right? And I needed to cut everything at 60 characters because I don't know, we had this Eudora. Eudora was then the male client, you know? So everything had to be formatted in a certain way. But then we were also trying to experiment and innovate a little bit. So we would, uh, send the message, which would be moderated in a certain way, then we would use automated translation tools, which were very, very rudimentary back then, you know, and then we would translate it to three other languages that were spoken in the Caribbean and Latin America. We were synthesizing a little bit, and this was 1998. And, and, and since then, I think I always, I always gravitated around the jobs and positions where we had to connect different worlds. So ECDPM, connecting policy and practice, now the JRC, uh, where we very much strive to connect the scientific part with uh, with the policy, with the policy dialogue and with policy interface, if you want, right? And if I just, you know, I was indeed thinking, what's the what's different? What has changed in retrospect? So indeed, I I, I looked at the paper that you just published on 2020, and you know, we all agree on all these things, right? And obviously, we have many platforms. We certainly enriched the space with a lot of psychological, behavioral insights, science, et cetera, et cetera. But there is something remarkably stable that I find, right? And it's, it's really that in order to leverage collective intelligence, you, know, you need to create an environment of psychological safety, okay? For sharing, for sharing ideas, for sharing questions, for sharing dissenting views, right? And for me, online dialogue is all about creating this space for safe, safe uh, psychological environment where we can collectively think and collectively share. Uh, so I think, you know, I really wanted to say that it hasn't changed that much. You know, the very core, the very fundamental, of course, there are platforms, of course, there are tools. Yeah, of course, there are zillions of things around it, which are fleshy. But for me, the whole world has remained remarkably, remarkably stable. And, and, and at the core, it's, it's very much the same business we were all in since many, many years. Thank you. Thank you. And I've forgotten that you were involved in the mystic business. That was also with, with IDRC, I think, in those days, no? Yes, yes, be, correct, yeah. correct. They had the partial funding from IDRC, you were right, yes. Yeah, I think that was all those connections. Okay, I see from the chat room, we're really getting into the history of it. So I'm going to, I mean, Noshin, you're the last of mine. We're going to tell us the same story. How did you get involved in all of this? And then we're going to come back and do a quick round looking to the future. We hope they're not too stable. Noshin. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Noshin and I'm connecting from Burkina Faso, but I am from Mauritius and my journey started when I was back in Mauritius. So I was at university, so bachelor's degree, agriculture, third year. I was very curious and I, I was very interested in ICT at that point. So at some point on Facebook, I saw a quiz of someone asking what, which flower is this? And when I looked at it, I realized, okay, this is a potato flower. I have to reply to this. 
This is how I got connected to someone who was behind a Facebook page on agriculture. Didn't know who he is or what he does, or even if it is a man or a woman. This is how it started. And uh, that person invited me for a training on blogging uh, on agriculture. So I went and it happened to be a research institute in Mauritius in agriculture. And I was there with other agriculture professionals. At that point, I would say like, I was the only young person in the, <laughs> in the room and yeah. But it went well, and this was how I realized, okay, this was part of activities by SADEC, which had an, uh, a project on uh, agricultural information specialists. And there was a big group already formed for that group. And the first one I got included in was that one. And that same network, through that same network, I got to know about CTA. At that point, I had no idea what CTA is what they do, and uh, I participated in an essay competition. Now this thing has changed everything for me because being back in Mauritius, you know, an isolated island, I had no way to get in touch with those in the continent or, you know, across the world in agriculture. So now when I got involved with CTA, I got into a new D group, the youth D group, where they had put uh, different young people from ACP countries there. So we started to get to know each other, share information. And in the same initiative, we were trained in Accra on web two and social media tools for development. And now that I see Ginks, I think I did one interview with you when I was there for, for that training. And this one also was another eye opener, like the web two training. Many of you who are here know that it's an eye opener for many of us and my interest really grew more from here on. So again, I got to know that, okay, you have a D groups for this youth one, but then I went on the plant platform and dug deeper. I saw that there are many other groups that are there, for example, knowledge management for development. It was there and then many other groups. So I clicked on the link and I requested to join and then I saw, okay, so nice. Now, not only I am on the youth group, but I can get onto other groups that are on other topics that are of interest to me. So this is how it went on with D groups. It continued because then I went to work at CTA now and there I had to manage these groups. So I had the youth group, for example, web 24 dev So I was moderating these groups and in the process, like I, I, I I didn't realize that whatever information I'm sharing, whatever conversation we are having during e-discussions, like the, 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 it lost a long time. Years later, I came here in Burkina, I meet people that I didn't know before and they say, oh, I, I know you, you used to send email when you, we were working on these things. So in terms of power of this network, it's really strong. Like, it's, it's not about, you know, getting famous or something. It's just to show how useful just an information, a simple link that you have shared can create a big impact. So today, um, five years ago, I took the decision to, to be independent. So today I'm the co-founder of a communication for development agency. And I'm really into storytelling, knowledge management, experience capitalization. And we work with organizations in Burkina Faso, but also across the world. Uh, so this is a bit about my journey. And yeah, I, I, I will tell you more in the next yeah, Thanks, no, she, sections. The, yeah. the journeys are quite rich and they're richer than I had anticipated, but oh, perhaps so our time is going to be a bit tight. So guys, we're going to look to the future quickly now. So I want you to look into your crystal balls. Yeah, and I want you to be thinking about what's coming. What are you hoping for? Think about online dialogue, communications, I don't know where we want to start. Louise, do you want to start? Or do you want to, what do you think? Since you've been listening now, look to the future. Give us half a minute or a minute. What's the future of the world? What are you hoping for? What's your crystal ball showing? Uh, okay, what does my crystal ball tell me? I mean, I think uh, we have a huge challenge to overcome in terms of the huge amount of information, the fake news, the, you know, this idea of, of the, the wheat from the chaff. Uh, you know, the world has changed fundamentally. 
uh, you know, what we do now in terms of online collaboration has become the norm for, for many, many people, but how we sort of take this now, this, this it's almost like we've almost like got a new baseline um, and use that to draw upon, uh, so I think some of the ideas that Ivan shared around really creating constructive and space, safe spaces for dialogue, uh, you know, the, the work that I, I do now, uh, you know, we, we do our sort of theory of change facilitation um, online, bringing people together to really, you know, get people on the same page. What are we trying to achieve here? Um, and how are we su being successful in achieving it? So really embedding these spaces into our sort of project management processes, ensuring that you know that there's there's still this challenge and that's why I mentioned the digital divide you know the the democratization of knowledge and the democratization of the online space it's we're not there yet we've come a very very long way um, but enabling people to sort of access these spaces become very comfortable in these in these spaces and because there's so much tool I've been using mural a lot and when people can get on it, it it's it's a, it's really equal because everyone can put their sticky and nobody knows it, whether you can you can sort of you know you could comment on what the boss has said without the boss knowing you've commented on it. So that, but we still got to get people onto those yeah. onto those tools. So and I think we're in you know we are in an increasingly polarized world. So you know sort of creating these spaces that bring people together rather than um, and 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 it really enable you know, this sort of verification and validation of the evidence that matters when we're sort of bombarded by the, the social media co companies that would, you know, put us in all in our echo chambers, so. Well, yeah, yeah. so it's not, if it was just connect, get over the divide, but actually that's not the challenge anymore. It is this much more sense making, but also that, that kind of safety. And that's interesting, yeah. Okay, let's move across. Steve, your your turn. What's your, your crystal? Your crystal balls in Ghana? I don't know. Maybe you have something else. Yeah, well, look to the future with. <laughs> I mean, for me, um, joining this, you know, world, I I saw the space as a safe space, you know, and so for me, that's really helped me. But, you know, we do have about two categories of persons: people who belong to organizations and projects that have these kinds of initiatives, but also individuals like myself and everyone here who is just self-motivated to belong to these kinds of spaces. But increasingly, by the day, what I see, I mean, is the fact that, you know, people are getting busy, people are complaining of email saturation, depending on what platform, you know, they are using the higher workloads. And so when you, you try to encourage people, yeah, they complain about, you know, higher workloads and all of those things. But I think that moving forward, there's more power in face-to-face, -face, you know, so we may really have to look at a hybrid, you know, system of both you know, the face-to-face -face and then the, 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 the virtual, you know, platforms. So for me, really looking into the future and based on my experience here, people believe a lot more in the face-to-face, -face, you know, while when it comes to the online, yes, they, there are excuses about workload and email, you know, saturation and all of those things, but they complain less when it has to do with the face-to-face. -face. So we really may have to have a discussion around a hybrid, you know, uh, system. Okay, the future might be hybrid. Ivan, your thoughts? No, the future will certainly be hybrid. I think that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's that, that comes quite clearly out of the crystal ball. No, I think a couple of four quick points. Okay, so first, that at least from from my standpoint, because I work in a scientific organization, right? So for us, it's very important to push this uh, evidence-based policy making. And, and the way we try to do this is actually, because you have very strong vision on the European level, um, because you have policies that are more and more joined up, right? The way what we try to do is use the science as an entry point to convene different policy domains and to create a space, space for dialogue where different, for example, policy DGs can meet uh, in order to exchange different perspectives and uh, to find uh, policy solutions for very, very challenging problems. Right? Um, now, the second one is, I think for us, it's also interesting to think about science diplomacy, right? Uh, so it's, it's a bit of a fuzzy term, okay? But, but the way we see this is that actually, when even when diplomatic links break, 
in terms of national dialogue, right? The scientific dialogue still very often remains very, very vital, right? So for us, the, the scientific dialogue, for example, in our case, uh, a series of uh, very strong networks we had with uh, African scientific institutions is, is certainly vital. It's vital, I would say, first to, to find the joint research agenda between Europe and Africa, right? uh, but also if you want geopolitically you know, to align on certain key messages, for example, in support of evidence for climate change. Then two other things that I'd like to flag. The first one is the technology, right? I, I think we need to think a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence and where, where this is gonna bring us. So I was just this morning in, in, in a conference where I, I think I did not really understand three quarters of it, right? Because it was about some sort of black holes and nebula formations and then how artificial intelligence and machine learning can, can think about, help us think. But the, at the beginning, they share this image of, of a landscape, right? So you have a sea, and C is very much the chess, you know, that's the level of artificial intelligence now, it plays chess, right? Then you have kind of a fields and then you have at, at the top, there is art and writing books and science, right? In the, in the middle, they actually have a lot about the social interaction. So I think we need maybe to be aware of how artificial intelligence is going to develop. I think what Louise mentioned, the aspect of disinformation uh, is, is, is quite important there. And we should probably, it will be interesting to look at it from geopolitical perspective. And finally, I don't know. I mean, I think as we are thinking about this, maybe this is a, a seed for a possible small kind of foresight study. You know, let's, let's, let's look at what are the possible trends over the next 10, 20 years. And let's then see how online dialogue can respond to the challenges of the future. And I'm saying this also because I, I, I will have to leave in a few minutes. So uh, I won't be able to, 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 to see the whole session. Thanks, Ivan. So the AI sounds interesting. The diplomacy sounds interesting. Look into the future, the foresight. Well, well, hopefully we'll get a bit more into the future. Norsheen, you're going to be the last. Tell us your crystal ball. Norsheen, uh, what are you seeing that's really coming our way? And then we're going to move on to the next segment. Uh, I think we, we will still be online. And from my, my, my experience these days is we were connected before more on email, but I would share my experience from here in Africa uh, on, on whatever projects or events we are having. Uh, what is becoming more and more popular is really WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups. For example, now, whenever we want to bring together a certain group of people with the same interest, okay, let's create a WhatsApp group. And we are using it like very often, even now we are implementing a project uh, on youth in Burkina and to reach out to them, like we, we cannot expect that they are going to check their email every day because even those who are entrepreneurs, they have business. Some of those are in rural areas. They don't check their emails every day, but they're on WhatsApp. They have internet connection. You can go to them. So I see the trend going a bit towards these tools that are one step even closer to, to, to the audience. And uh, even this week, I was in Accra for, for a training and on women in environment and climate change in West Africa. And we realized we don't have a network specifically on this niche, women, climate change, environment in West Africa. It was so difficult to get this small group together because we don't have an existing network. So as first step, this WhatsApp group is here, but we see there is potential to do more. So, so my, my input would be, yes, these tools like WhatsApp, Telegram, that we don't think that it can help, it might be helping us because it's already there on their phone and they check it all the time. Yeah, thank you. 